Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing focusing oriented therapy. So this is not this is not what I do 100% of the time. Um, so there's there's but it, it's FOT is any therapy that where the therapist invites the client to just sense that what we call that living experiencing and um, to be grounded in the body to notice the floor and to the chair to be anchored um, p provides can provide a safe um, a safe place a, a safe way of being which then allows perhaps wobbly feelings or perhaps you know potentially overwhelming feelings it, it's a good way of of grounding and rooting them so that they don't become overwhelming so yeah. it, it's to do with that anchoring, I, I call it. So yeah. some of the things, I, like I could see with Mike and, and colleagues in the chat room were seeing, like in the session, um, what you were doing with Mike was putting him in touch with some feelings that were much beyond this topic as well. Absolutely. So I guess it makes sense that you want to ground your clients. They might get quite surprised with what they get in touch with. Ab absolutely, yes. Yes, I mean, the, the, the whole point of, of FOT is that, it is, well, firstly, it's to be safe. Yes. <laughs> uh, safety is preeminent. But but when, when you sense into the body, the, in, in FOT theory, the body is not just a machine. The body is a wonderful interaction with everything around us. And the, the body often um, picks up information and then filters it through to our conscious minds. So, um, you know, you, you go into a room and you you're instantly sense that there's a horror, there's a funny atmosphere there. And that filters through, and then you see that there's a couple whom you whom you might um, be friends with who are staring daggers at each other. But the felt sense picks it up first. Yes. Yeah. The the, the, the felt yeah. sense picks it up, and then it filters through to our conscious minds. So in focusing, we're going we're going if you like the, 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 it's, it's language. Um, if you think, and I've said this before, but think about how babies learn language. Babies learn language by experiencing first and then putting words to it afterwards. So baby feels hungry and mum says, oh, you're a hungry little girl, aren't you? So baby takes the experience of hunger, the word hunger, and, 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 and puts them together, associates them. So the, 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 the experience gives meaning to the words. Yeah. So in, in focusing, we're going back to the experiencing. We're having a dialogue between the head and, and the experience. So we're saying, is, is this the thinking that feels right? Yeah. And you were doing that with Mike throughout that session. Like Mike was saying some things he was thinking, and you were asking him to compare that to his felt sense, to the feelings yep. he had. Yeah. Yeah. And and the the, the uh, when you do you have what you there's three things that one of three things that can happen, either the thinking doesn't match at all, which is fine because you now know what it's not, or it's in what I call in the ballpark, it's like oh it's near, it's not quite but it's near, or else it fits completely, and then when it fits completely, there tends to be an experiential shift. The thing begins to feel different at that at the point that the words fit. Right. So, like, there were some questions about. So, how does this apply to the issue, if you like? And I guess, like, a, a lot of the time, you weren't focusing really on what Mike was, what he's tussling with, like what he's presenting with. But the what you're after is the matching of the feelings and the thoughts and that produces something that's usually helpful? That's Absolutely, very helpful. Um, it, because it, it, it's, it, we now know a lot more about the issue actually from this process. The issue, as I understand it, is...